I hope you edit this well. And just for, for so I can keep track of everybody, go ahead and say your name. My name is Charlotte Diamond. Okay, Charlotte. And you're, I know you as Auntie Sunny. Yeah. I've known you as Auntie Sunny. I got one question. This is mm -hmm. where I'm, this film is about me asking everyone I can find this one question. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning of life? Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's an awful deep one. Well, first of all, it means that you're still with this world, that you're aware, that you're alive, that you can participate, that you have feeling, and that you can love, and you can hate, um, that you can get up in the morning and do what you want within the law. Um, it gives you the ability to enjoy every day, to make the most of what you have, and uh, to share with people, to spend time with relatives like I am now. Um, and on a whole, it's just, I think I've been very fortunate because I think I've had a good life. I've had bad times, but for the most part, I've had a very good life. And uh, I'm glad to be here still. And I just hope I can be here long enough to see my grandchildren who run from ages six weeks to seven years into at least young men, if not grown men, but at least into adolescence. That's all I can tell you. Okay. Right. okay. Cool. That was easy. Yeah. It wasn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> First, um, just go ahead and tell me your full name. My name is Willie Perlman. Okay. And I know you as Papa Willie. Yeah. But um, this film is basically me going around and asking everyone one question. Yeah. That question is, what is the meaning of life? What's the meaning of life? To me, the meaning of life is dust to dust. There's no meaning to life. It's all anything that anybody refers to meaning in life, it's just their intellect and imagination uh, trying to determine what, the, what it's all about. But to me, it's self-preservation, aggression, determination. That's the meaning of life. To keep going until it's time for you, it's time for the next generation. That simple. Cool. So, yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I got it. I got. I'm shooting from from about here outside. Oh, okay. Of the noise. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I ask everyone their name. I don't so. have to call. I don't have to call my name either. No, you're good. <laughs> I ask everyone their name, so you can make up a name. No, okay. No, I can give you my, my right name, Beverly Perlman. Okay. Okay. And I know you as Nana Beverly. Yeah, that's right. And this film is basically me going around and asking people one question. Oh. What is the meaning of life? Meaning of life. That's a good one. I think you asked me this. I talked about that a long time ago. Um, I can honestly say I don't know. Isn't that awful? Um, I think, but well, I think what a life should be, if that's what you want. You know? uh, I mean, living your life so that you're, you're doing some good to the cut to do to everybody around you, and nothing that you'd be ashamed of, and not just for yourself. I guess that's about all I can think of. Is that enough for you? Yeah, but it's it's your it's up to you. Yeah, that's yeah, if that, yeah. that's no, that, that's about it. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the three of you are from what what we call the greatest the great generation or the greatest generation, and I think you have a perspective on the world and on. The way things are that I think this generation in its fast food, fast soundbite world doesn't have. So, what type of advice, I mean, from any anyone who wants to go first, would you give to people who are trying to to make it in the world now? It's just plain determination. So, what you can with the abilities that you have. I don't think there's much more of that. You have, you have to plug away at it. And see, yeah, you have to, because it's your responsibility to take care of yourself, uh, then you have no, no one to blame except yourself, because all the opportunities here are available to everybody. You know, there's really, there can't be any complaints, really.
That's shifting the blame. That's how I look at it. Do you think that this generation shifts the blame? More than... No, this, this, this generation has no complaints. They're, they're getting it, all the help that other, gener other generations never got. There isn't, a, there isn't a program that's not available today, paid for by the United States Treasury. Everything is there. Yeah, but see, I don't agree with that because I think the kids today have more pressure. I mean, we grew up in World War II and I never felt threatened like I do now. I never felt like they were, anybody was going to come to our shores and attack us. And I think the kids today live under a whole different ballgame. I think they are wrong in that they don't think there's a future and consequently they live in the now and want to spend it and do it all at a very early age. But I think they've got a whole different kind of pressure. We worried about getting food on the table and whether our parents could make a living and keep us you know, going. But they've got a, a different kind of pressure and I'm not sure whether it's a, a bigger one or a smaller one. But it, it's, I would not want to be growing up now. I, I think you're. I think you're right. You're proud of it, but uh, as you say, we we grew up. We we knew that we had to do what we had to do for ourselves. There was nobody out there handing us anything, and if we didn't live within our means and think about the future, there would be not. There would be no future. I mean, you say Social Security, you get the problem now, but we're in that age, and if we didn't plan on uh, investments and w living within our means and saving for the future, we'd be starving on Social Security. I don't think privatizing it is going to be the answer. Definitely not. No. But uh, they have to. You have to know that if you spend it all now and you end up in debt, the day is going to come when you're going to regret it. You'll have it all now, but you'll have nothing later because nothing, nothing is that guaranteed in this life. To me, it's to me, it's the easy credit. It's what happened yep. in 19, oh, that, 1929. That, that's, to say that's easy credit. Yeah, that's that's the biggest problem I think they have today. It's easy, and they and it, they're, they're, they're in debt. They get interest payments, and they don't care. Most of them don't care. They figure as long as I can afford it, and I can give, I can pay it out. So what if it takes me the rest of my life? Eventually, it will be gone. And it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all. Mm -hmm. But I guess you have to have been there. I looked through the Depression to know that you have to depend on yourself for taking care of yourself. You remember the Depression, I, though? Just about. I, I caused it. I was <laughs> born in 29. You know, that's what voted it. <laughs> I was born yeah. in November 29, right after the Depression. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, we didn't, we, we were young enough that we didn't suffer from it, but we knew what happened to, to, you know, to the families in general. I mean, how much was lost, businesses were lost, I mean, in the immediate family. It was a whole new life after that. There was still a depression in 1940, 41. It didn't end there. That's, I think the war helped stop the depression because mm -hmm. if everybody oh, that now had that. jobs. Yeah. That's right. But that was not a very good way to stop it. Well, so it was also the first time anybody got a chance to leave home, go out and do something other than just grow up in the same town, get a job, and live mm -hmm. in the same town. It opened up a college education to all these returning veterans, many yeah, of whom no, could never have, yeah, have afforded ahead. an education. And so it, it created a whole different economy, a different class of people, which did much better than the generation before them. But that was the thing that was important. I think every generation wanted something better for the next one. Now, I don't know how much better, you know, financially in any way, things can get for the next generation. There isn't anything that most little kids want that they don't already have. Method they have it before they want it. You know, that's the other problem. I mean, they I don't know they want it. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's almost like the parents have to produce this stuff because they don't want their kids to want for anything. And if everybody else got it, I mean, my grandchildren they got tennis lessons and swimming lessons and soccer lessons. I mean, there's just anything you possibly can want is available, and they the parents provide it. Nobody has to ask for it. They just just give it. Parents yeah. feel they have to do it. That, that's the thing. Everybody's doing it, so I mm -hmm. have to do it too. Those who can afford it are lucky, but those who can't are doing, trying to do it anyway. Well, as they say, it's a very pressured world nowadays. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, I don't remember, even, even living in a time when things were, were tight, real tight. I don't ever remember, well, as a child, I remember not having everything I wanted or food. But I don't remember as an adult 
ever wanting something that I couldn't have. But the question was, do I want it enough to go with the death for it? And when you say no, you live without it, the day comes when you're very glad you did because you can live very well after that. Without the debt. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. I mean, it, it, a lot of kids, young people today don't know that. They, they're buying, they, there was an a article on the paper the other day, they're buying houses, paying interest only for five years. Now, what happens when the interest comes to having to pay the principal, the interest rate will go up, they'll need the principal, and their attitude is, well, then I'll walk away from it, but I'll have it for five years. Well, the attitude is it'll just keep getting, the prices will keep going up. But they don't. They it's don't a, it's a bubble. They don't see the bubble. Yeah, no. But we've seen it go up and we've seen it go down and we've seen it go up again. But uh, you, you can't count on it. But when they're selling, when they, there's an ad on the paper that says, for two, for thousand dollars a month you can own your own home. And then when you read the small print it said, five year mortgage, pay interest only. And then they're telling you that the set, and then you take a, plus you have a second mortgage, which they don't include into that first thousand dollars. It's idiotic. It's completely, but unless they get explained to them, they're not going to understand it. Until I read the small print, I said, gee, this is great for anybody. You know, for five years, and then by that time you're making more money and you can afford it. It doesn't work that way. Not the way they're doing it. But, uh, I just, as I said, Sonny said it, and I, I agree with her. I wouldn't want to be bringing up a family today. And I wouldn't want to be working today. <laughs> well, the, I'm glad I'm at the stage I am. I mean, they say that my generation will be the first generation that does worse than their parents, that it had been building up, yeah. but now that it's, it's, it's yeah. reversing. I that mean, it's, they, they have better opportunities for making it. I mean, we, I mean, uh, I think the, when, it's a competition. Yeah, it's my so oldest daughter had her, her tonsils yeah. out. That we, we were made, that her father was earning $3,000 a year. What's the guy that was that was, I'm saying it because the reason I remember it is that if you, if you the three thousand was considered low income, and the doctor said the insurance policy said if you make three thousand dollars a year, the doctor has to treat you for what Blue Cross paid, and I got a call from the doctor saying uh, that's charity. I don't have to take charity patients, and I answered my answer was if I want to be a charity patient, I wouldn't be paying for insurance. I mean, that, that was the way things went then. I mean, the what year is that? Um, Approximately. We'll figure it out. Uh, Toby was not, what, 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 50 year, 55 years ago. So, yeah. But 3000 was, was, was low, but you, you could live on it. That's, you, you, we didn't want for anything. I mean, we, we ate well. We had a comfortable place to live. I think we even had a car by then. <laughs> yeah. My, 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 my dates aren't too good, but I remember the years. To build from one house, so buy the next one, you know, work. Didn't do it all at once. It did it over what, five, five homes. So, uh, you know, but it could be done. Back, back now, yeah. now to today, yeah. it's the house price to begin with now, is so now expensive. Now, the interest rates are down where they were then. Hmm. But then we bought our first house for $9,500. When our car within, costs within, more than yeah, a house, yeah. Yeah, what we pay and for that's house, with yeah. that's a two family with income income coming from the other part, the other apartment. Mm -hmm. So you know, it was easy to start then. Sure. You know, nothing down. We were extravagant. We paid fifteen thousand. <laughs> well, that was a that was a second house. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, things were think. I mean, now the price is just ridiculous. I mean, I, we came to California thinking we could buy something, and it's out of question. That's so, ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're living in an apartment. But what some of these young people are making is, is oh, yeah. beyond my comprehension. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. really, some young people, are, it's just unbelievable yeah. how much money they're making. Yeah, just as long as, but, but I think they're making it and they expect to make it forever. And some of them are getting a sad awakening when suddenly things get off. Well, and in your bracket, your son, your son uh, is making, you mentioned He made a point of a million dollars last yeah. year. Yeah. And that's what that's in sim similar to sales, right? Yeah, but he, w he worked hard and he worked yeah. long hours, but that's a lot of money. Yeah. But yet, now on the other end, if he you ask him how much they saved, though, but how much, how much they... <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> um, but now he had some friends who were had bought into the um, high-tech stock, and their brokers, when the, when the market was going so sky high, had advised these, some of these young guys, a couple of them, to take second mortgages 
so they could invest, take the money and invest it. Unfortunately, the market went, and that's where their houses went too. That's where the yeah. broker should have gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then again, you know, sometimes it's the people who are looking to get rich quick that get into the schemes, and then if you're not looking for something for nothing, you usually don't get as burnt. Right. Yeah. That's right. But it's the people who are always looking to make a deal. Remember, remember when Arthur's yeah. first job, he went public, and he brought oh, yeah. money to everybody he knows? Yeah, yeah, everybody he knows. Bye, one bye, of the first bye. discount stores. <laughs> first discount store that went up, and everybody, he, he invested, but he didn't invest his own money. <laughs> he invested his, you know, oh. his father in law's money. Well, he grabbed some of that, too, yeah. And then it, it, it come out on the market, and then it just collapsed. The whole place collapsed. There, there was nothing left. So he was upset that nobody else bought. No. But uh, when the market, when things were, if like if they, what we as were they when the interest rates were double digits, and people were having trouble buying homes, well, those who didn't ha didn't owe anything and didn't have to finance anything, did very very well. Okay. Yeah. If you didn't, if you had to take a loan, a mortgage. Uh, you know, finance anything, you, you, they couldn't do it. But if you had money to invest, you did beautifully. I mean, it's <laughs> dependent what what what, what draft, you know, what state you were in at that time. You know, with, uh, we think back. We 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 thought we had a tough for <laughs> some of those years. Thinking back, they weren't so tough. Yeah. You know? I the only thing I did. I apologized to my kids and I said. I apologize for the things they want. We wanted to do, we couldn't do, because it meant spending money that we need was needed for something else. But I don't feel guilty today because if we had done that, our children would be taking care of us today. They would, we would be asking them for help, and that's something no parent wants ever to do. Agree? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm staring at that. We said there's, there's still <laughs> oh, there's still mixed up. <laughs> Quick, what to put a camera off your first. Yeah. <laughs> They're not. It's so all out of one package, right? No. It's all three different package. colors. The day you put it up, it was all one color. I don't know what happened to it <laughs> since then. <laughs> it's okay. It was perfect timing because I'm down to the last minute of tape on this oh, one. Oh, oh, that's good. I, I hope you edit this well. <laughs> I hope you edit this well. I hope you edit this well. I hope you edit this well. <laughs>